Bonjour, I'm Pierre from French Moments, and in this video, I will take you for a walk in the village of Cabrière d'Avignon in Provence. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It really supports the channel and helps us bring more amazing content to you. Also, if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest videos. The starting point of our tour of Cabrière d'Avignon is at the town hall located on the Rue Jean Giono. Behind the town hall, there's a large free car park where I parked my car. We'll start the tour by heading to the Grand Rue. On this part of the journey, there's little space to walk, so you must be cautious of the traffic. We'll enter the old village via the Grand Rue on the right. Most of the village's shops are found here. In the Luberon region, where each village is perched to defend itself in the past better, Cabrière is an atypical village because it is almost completely flat. Today, Cabrière d'Avignon offers the tranquility of a Provençal village with streets lined with dry stone walls connecting little squares and fountains. The village is home to two distinctly different monuments, the church and the castle. Here's the Place de l'Église and the Saint-Vincent church in the Provençal style. It was rebuilt after the Wars of Religion and consecrated in 1587. The beautiful house opposite is the old presbytery of the church, built in 1661. In front of us stands the war memorial, erected in 1921. Let's continue along the Grand Rue to the right. I took this film during the lunch hour, which is why the village appears empty and lifeless. The shops are closed, like this butcher's shop with its lovely old-fashioned front. Here we are at the end of the Grand Rue, in one of the most charming corners of Cabrière, the lower fountain or Fontaine Basse. I'm quite fond of this fountain, and it's a pity that it's not running. Let's continue our exploration of Cabrière d'Avignon via the Rue du Château, which, as its name suggests, leads us to the castle. Here's a wash house fountain. Let's take a closer look. The wash house has been superbly restored. It consists of three basins that were used for washing and rinsing. The wooden beam was used to wring out the laundry. It is one of the three washhouses still present in the village. Let's now head towards the castle. The castle of Cabrière was built in the 11th century by the Ademar family, who are the Viscount of Cavaillon, that is the first hereditary counts of Orange. Then in the 14th century, it passed to Henri de Chiabot. His daughter, Laure, was born in 1314, and some historians claim she could be the legendary Laura of Petrarch. To learn more, read my blog post about Fontaine de Vaucluse. In 1490, Cabrière returned to Giraud dans ses unes, Baron of Cadvous. To exploit his lands, he brought in Waldensian families from the Italian Alps. 
to exploit his lands, he brought in Waldensian families from the Italian Alps. Do you see this memorial? It briefly presents the ends of the Waldensian story in the Luberon. We will talk about it in a few moments, but first let's take a ride onto the Chemin de la Portalette for a few meters to discover the western ramparts of the castle. This is an old fortification of a vaguely rectangular plan whose current average height is 8 meters. A circular tower supported each angle of the fortifications, but the western wall here has an additional one. You can see numerous gun ports and arrow slits. Let's retrace our steps. The castle was destroyed during the massacres of 1545. A few years ago, the ramparts on the castle were in a petty state, but they have since been renovated. Today, the castle is a private estate that is not open to visitors. The history of Cabrières is marked by the massacre of April 1545 during the campaign of Meignier d'Oped against the Waldensians. The castle served as their refuge, but after the Waldensians' capitulation, the population was slaughtered and the village was razed. The few survivors were sent to the galleys. Let's take a left onto the Rue de la Baronnette. We walk along an olive field and its dried stone wall. Here's another charming spot in Cabrière. The Rue Eustache Marron runs along the northern part of the castle and is named after the leader of the Valdensian Rebellion in 1545. Here's an old well. So, where does the name Cabrière come from? There are two possibilities. The first is that Cabrière refers to the old quarries, Carrière, found in the area. Another version suggests that Cabrière translates to goat stable, because goat in Provençal is said cabro. Indeed, the coat of arms of Cabrière d'Avignon features a goat. The word d'Avignon comes from its belonging to the Comtat Venessin. It also differentiates the village from Cabrière d'Aigues, also located in the Vaucluse department. Here we are at the intersection with the Chemin des Pasquiers on the Place Haute. It's yet another charming spot in Cabrière. Here's the second wash house of the village, superbly restored. Let's go down the Chemin des Pasquiers. Cabrière d'Avignon was part of the Comtat Venessin and was attached to France on the 18th of August 1791. The village was included in the Vaucluse department from its creation in 1793. Let's turn right onto the Rue Neuve.
Electricity arrived in the village in 1923. As for the drinking water network, it was installed in 1938. Up to now, Cabrières d'Avignon has curiously remained apart from the overall transformation of the Luberon into a luxury destination that has affected the nearby villages of Gord, Ménerbe and Lacoste. The inhabitants enjoy an exceptional quality of life and a relatively rare tranquility in this highly touristic region of the Luberon, even in summer. However, the population has continually grown since 1945. From 615 inhabitants in 1946, it has increased to 1,800 inhabitants in 2021. And here we are back at the Fontaine Bass. Let's take the Rue des Pasquis on the left. Bonjour le chat. That's where the village's only bakery is located. It is said that Cabrières d'Avignon offers two faces to discover. The cultivated Provence in the Calavon Plain and the harsh, dry Provence on the scrubland slopes of the Mont de Vaucluse. The southern part of the commune is mainly made up of agricultural lands. This territory is located on the heights of the Calavon Plain. Cherries, almonds, olives and asparagus are cultivated here. The vineyard produces AOC Ventoux wines. Here we are at the intersection with the Chemin des Pasquiers where we were earlier. And here is the third wash house of Cabrière. And the pretty flowered fountain whose water fed the wash house. Okay, let's go back down to the Chemin des Pasquiers. Let's turn right onto the Rue de l'Église, which leads us to the church. The northern part of the village, mainly composed of woods and scrub land, is located on the Mont de Vaucluse. Truffles are cultivated there thanks to the presence of numerous oak groves. In 1860, seeds of the Lebanon cedar were sown north of the village on a site that would become the cedar forest. It's a magnificent site that spans a little over 5 hectares. In this forest, there is a refreshment stand and a fitness trail. Here's the apse of the church. And in a few moments, we'll be at the Place de l'Église, where we were earlier. Here is the Grand Rue. We will go down the high street to return to our starting point at the town hall.
If you're watching this on YouTube and you've been to Cabrières d'Avignon and this part of Provence, I'd love to hear about your visit. Drop a comment below and tell us what you loved about it. Let's take a left. Here we are back at our starting point. Thank you for watching this video. It was a real pleasure to bring you along on my discovery walk in the village of Cabrières d'Avignon in Provence. I'll see you soon for other adventures. A bientôt.